Well, folks, today we want to talk about energy resource concepts. That sounds wild. We're just going to kind of learn about energy because this entire uh, chapter deals with energy, primarily things like the energy that we find in coal, in oil, some alternative stuff, things like that. But we need to just kind of learn about energy and what is energy, how is it transformed, just all the kind of ins and outs about energy. So it's going to be probably a pretty lengthy podcast, so let's have at it. Hey, I want to talk about heat versus temperature. So when we talk about energy, the two words that confuse students the most seems like are heat and temperature. They don't quite understand the differences. So I think to start this off, I want to uh, take you to a triathlon that I recently attended or participated in and uh, talk to you about heat versus temperature. Well, here I am at the 10th annual um, Harvest Moon uh, Triathlon. I'm about to swim 2.4, or 1.2 miles, and then bike 56, and actually the aqua bike race. Most people will get off and do a 13.2 mile run. But that's not why I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you today about, um, about water and about heat, actually. And what I want to talk about, I pretend that I have a coffee mug in my hand. You know, I don't like to drink coffee, but let's say I had a coffee mug. And the question is, do I, which has more heat? This coffee mug, yeah, the one that's right here with my cool pink hat, and, or, this reservoir. Huh. Well, most people would think that this coffee cup with steaming hot coffee has more heat, and that would be incorrect, because heat is actually a function of the mass, and since this reservoir has a lot more mass than my coffee cup, th this one right here, yeah, that, that's that one, um, this has a lot more heat than this. Now, the coffee cup has is a greater temperature, which is an average kinetic energy, than the 66 degree water that I'm about to swim in, okay? But uh, it doesn't have more heat. Good? Great. Well, hopefully that helped to clarify what the difference is between heat and temperature. So let's just uh, kind of get at this here and get some information out here. There'll be a lot of definitions in this podcast. So kinetic energy, kinetic energy. It's the energy associated with the motion of a body of matter. So if you have something, a block of wood, and it's moving, then it has kinetic energy. Um, a car, a bicycle, um, a tiny atom of a gas particle, same thing. It essentially follows an equation, a mathematical equation, and it is equal to one-half times m, where m stands for the mass of the object, times the velocity squared. That's v stands for the velocity. If you do it right, the mass would be in kilograms, and the velocity would be in meters per second. So I think the interesting thing about energy is it's a kilogram meter over a uh, meter squared over a second squared, and this is called a joule. Now there's two main units of energy, the joule and the calorie. So this is how we can measure kinetic energy. So now let's kind of uh, put some meat on this heat thing that we talked about a little bit earlier in the video clip. It is the kinetic energy of all of the moving molecules in a system. Huh? So if I've got a sample and I've got a bunch of molecules. Now all molecules are moving. So let's just say this is a, a box containing uh, this number of gas particles and they're each moving at a particular speed. Okay? Some go fast and some go slow. So the short arrow means they're going slow, and the big arrow means they're going fast. So, um, so it is of all. That's very important. So if I were to like take the energy of this guy right here who's moving fast, he has more energy than this guy right here who's moving slow. And so when I say it's the kinetic energy of all of the moving particles, you would add up the energy of number one, number two, number three, all these. You would find all of them. Well, how much do I got? Seven. I got eight of them. So if I have eight particles, it's um, so heat is the kinetic energy of all. Now mathematically, it's essentially the sum of the energies of every substance in the sample. Okay. Now temperature is different. It is the average kinetic energy of each of the molecules in the system. Average. Write this down. Let's go back to our diagram. So when I say the average, well, um, that's the sum. The heat, or temperature, pardon me, is the average. Well, average, mathematically, you would take um, all nine chemicals and find out their energies and divide by nine, right? So it's an average. It's not the same thing. 
Okay, so it is the average kinetic energy. It is a me measure of the energy. Here is the energy of the vibrations of the atoms or molecules in a body. It's, it's the average, though. This is the definition in your book. I think it's kind of cheesy and a little confusing. It is the average. That's the key thing to understand. Um, and I do want to say one thing, is that all atoms are in motion. Okay, so if I have, um, um, uh, everybody grab your hand. Here, oh, there's a hand. Look like a hand, not a very good hand. Okay, your hand has atoms in it, all right? Your skin cells have atoms in it, and they are moving. Um, usually what you've got at the molecular level, especially like with a solid, if I have a solid at the molecular level, they would be kind of stacked in a nice ordered pattern. But essentially, they're vibrating back and forth. All of the atoms are moving back and forth. The way I can know that is if I have a, a pan, I had some pancakes for breakfast this morning, and so I put the, the, the this is a, this is a, uh, this is my stove, and this is my pan. Um, the pan was cold when I got it out of the stove, and then what's happening is, is when I heated it up so I could cook the pancakes, um, the atoms in the pan he moved faster. And when they moved faster, they were warmer. They were hot. Who's it? it? So they got hot, right? Okay, I think you get it. All right. And uh, we should take a note here is that you, um, all molecules are moving or all atoms are moving. But uh, if you can get it to the lowest possible, t possible temperature, absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius, then it would stop moving. So if you could get something to 273 degrees below zero, it would not be able to move, which you really can't do. So not important there. Now, now that we know that we've got energy and temperature, we're really going to focus on heat. All right? And heat is energy. Don't mistake that. Heat is energy. Temperature is not energy. All right. Heat can be transferred in one of three ways. Convection. Now, we've learned about convection um, quite a bit in this class, as we've learned about convection cells, uh, convection currents, etc. It is the motion of a fluid caused by the density differences from place to place in a fluid. And a key thing about a convection, which we really, really haven't, really, really haven't said today, is it all, before maybe, is it only works in fluids. And a fluid is either a liquid or liquid or a gas. does not apply to solids. You cannot get convection in solids. So uh, fluids are either liquids or gases. So that's important. And there's something called conduction and radiation. And I want to uh, elaborate on those, which we really have not talked about in this class. So to look at convection, um, it's the motion of a fluid caused by density differences. We already said that, I guess. And here, of course, is a classic picture. We have a convection cell. We have a, a stove. And then the liquid is uh, uh, causing the convection cell. It heats up from the bottom. And it gets to the top. And it cools down. And it settles to the bottom. And we've seen it. Here's kind of a picture picture a graphic of a convection cell. Here's the hot source. The, the, the heat source is coming right here. And then we can see a convection cell. So we've seen convection cells. So I don't think I need to belabor this. Or, well, I guess we will. Here is another convection cell picture. This is, of course, of the Earth at the equator. We get a convection cell that goes like this. And by the way, this then creates another convection. It kind of falls there. And that's where we get some wind here. And of course, then there's the Coriolis effect, which will bend it to the right. We've learned about all this previously. All right. Here's something new, though. Conduction. All right, what is conduction? It is transfer via contact. So I would take your hand, and I take your hand and place it on something that has a different temperature. See the cold table or um, something. Uh, put it um, under your arm where it's warm, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> and there is transfer uh, of energy via contact. The big fancy definition is the process of heat transfer by which more vigorous vibrations of relatively hot matter are transferred to adjacent relatively cold matter, thus tending to even out the differences in temperature between the two regions of matter. Basically, they touch each other. So here we have a fire. Look at our picture down here. The fire heats up. This is like a metal rod. Well, the temperature, um, the part, the, the flame is touching the rod, and so the hottest part of the rod is this part right here. Now, over here, though, the temperature is still quite warm. If you were to touch this, you'd go, ah, hot, hot, um, Because, of course, it's still hot, but it, it's because of conduction. So as we heat up this by contact, these molecules are vibrating, and they heat up these molecules, which heat up these molecules, which heat up these molecules, which heat, eventually they make it their way down this. So if you take a, a, um, a stick, a metal rod, let's say, and you stick it in a fire, and you're holding on to one end, 
Um, even though your not, hand is not in the fire, if you leave it in there long enough, you're going to burn your hand because the, uh, by conduction the energy is being transferred. And there's a third type, and it's called radiation. And we've kind of talked about this. The movement of energy at the speed of light in the form of electromagnetic waves. And this is essentially the sun sending its radio, not radio, its radiation to the earth, some, some radio waves, but it's sending all kinds of different waves, uh, infrared, ultraviolet, um, visible, all the different kinds of light we learned about a long time ago. And that's uh, sending the waves, and those waves can transfer energy. Now probably the easiest